If you want to control your Home Assistant devices using Alexa, but you don't have Home Assistant Cloud, Emulated Hue is by far the easiest way to achieve that. And it's built right into Home Assistant, so you don't need any add-ons or hacky workarounds. In this video, I'll show you how it works and exactly how to set it up. If you don't already know, Philips Hue is a smart lighting ecosystem and it integrates really well with Alexa through the Philips Hue bridge, which is their proprietary hub. Emulated Hue makes Home Assistant appear as a Philips Hue bridge, effectively tricking Alexa into pairing with it, and by extension, any devices you expose within Home Assistant. To be clear, you don't need Philips hardware for this or any other hardware for that matter. As its name suggests, it's all emulated using Home Assistant. You can enable it with a few lines of very simple code, and I'll walk you through the whole process step by step. There are some limitations with this method you should be aware of. First, since Philips Hue is a lighting product range, Alexa will assume every device you add is a light, even if it's not. So if you're adding bulbs, you'll get all the expected controls, such as on, off, brightness, and color temperature. For other devices, you will be limited to just on or off, although the brightness slider can be used for volume control with certain speakers. It also makes things a bit harder to manage in the app, because everything is categorized as a light, but this isn't a problem if you're just using it for voice control since you won't have to open the app anyway. Second, a Philips Hue bridge can only hold around 60 or so devices, and unfortunately that limit does carry across to emulated Hue. So if you have a ton of smart devices, you will need to be a bit picky about which ones you expose to Alexa. Finally, this method requires that your home assistant is on a static IP address which typically means going into your Wi-Fi router's configuration and assigning a fixed IP to the device running Home Assistant. If you don't know how to do that, speak with your internet service provider because this process can vary a lot depending on who you're with, and in some cases you may have to pay an additional fee. If any of those limitations are a deal breaker for you and Home Assistant Cloud is still off the table for whatever reason, then I recommend an alternative method using Node-RED. That will be the topic of my next video, so subscribe if you want to see that. And if you're watching in the future, then it will be linked on screen. Otherwise, let's head over to Home Assistant and get this thing set up. By default, you won't have access to this file. Just go to Settings, Add-ons, Add-on Store, search for File Editor and hit the Install button. Enable all of these settings and start the add-on and now you can access the file editor straight from your sidebar. If this doesn't open your configuration.yaml file, go to the folder icon up here and choose it from this list to open it. If you'd like to tinker with Home Assistant, you will need this add-on eventually, so you may as well just leave it installed. Now you need to add the emulated Hue code to your configuration file, and I'll provide that code below in the description so you can copy and paste it in like so. From here, where it says host IP, add the IP address of the device you're running Home Assistant on. To do this, log into your Wi-Fi router, instructions are usually on the router itself, and view a list of your connected devices to see their individual IP addresses. You should see Home Assistant listed somewhere here and you just need to copy its IP address. Note that if your IP address changes later on, the Alexa integration will stop working, which is why, as I said, you really need a fixed or static IP address for this to work reliably. Next, for listen port, just leave it as 80. This is the same for everyone. Now, at this point, you'll need to tell Emulated Hue which devices you want to expose to Alexa. If you leave exposed by default set to true, it will expose all of your devices linked to Home Assistant as long as they match one of the domains listed here. And this list can be edited down, so if you wanted to expose all of your switches and nothing else, you would remove everything but the switch domain. Now, the entities section allows you more granular control over what gets exposed. In this case, I've listed a particular switch and I've set hidden to true meaning every switch aside from this one will be exposed. But you can also use this to expose a device that isn't a switch without exposing the entire category or domain for that device. For example, if I copy these three lines and paste them below, 
I can change the entity to one of my lights, give it a name that will be used for voice control and set hidden to false, which tells it to expose this device even though I haven't exposed it at the domain level. If you don't know the entity name for a device, you can check this by going to developer tools, states and searching for the device. Of course, this is all optional. If you want to expose domains as a whole, you can remove the entities part entirely. So that's one way to do it. Another way is to change exposed by default to false, which means none of your devices are exposed and this list of domains is now ignored. So you can go ahead and just remove this section. This approach requires listing individual devices you want to expose using the entities section like we did earlier. Just be sure to set hidden to false for each entity that you add here. Either of these approaches will work, but I recommend being conservative with this. Only expose devices that you intend to use with Alexa. It makes everything a lot easier to manage and it prevents you from hitting that device limit, which has been known to break the entire setup. Okay, once you're happy with the code, you'll need to restart Home Assistant for the changes to take effect. Make sure you click the save icon, then go to settings, the three dots in the corner and restart Home Assistant. If there's a problem with your code, it will prevent a restart. In that case, go back to your configuration file and check the formatting of the code. You can reference my code in the previous step, check the spaces, indentations and correct any typos because it's very unforgiving when it comes to mistakes. It will take a couple of minutes to reboot, but after that, you'll be ready for step four. Now you'll want to wake up your Amazon speaker and tell her to detect devices. Say exactly those words and she will respond with, Starting discovery. This will take a few moments. Turn on your new devices now, and if needed, put them in pairing mode. You don't actually need to put your devices into pairing mode because Emulated Hue is already broadcasting them. Just give her a few minutes to finish the scan and eventually she should pair with all the devices you exposed in step two. At this point, you should be able to see them in the other app under the devices tab and you can control all devices listed here directly from the app. You can control them with your voice, using the voice assistant, and you can even use them in a to routines. And that's really all there is to it. Before we wrap this up, there are a couple of extra tips I want to go over. First, if Alexa isn't finding your devices during the scan, you can check to make sure Emulated Hue is running correctly. Go to your browser and enter the IP address of your home assistant. This will be the same IP address we used as the host IP earlier. Then add the following to the end of it. Colon 80 forward slash API slash V2 forward slash lights. This will give you a list of devices being exposed through emulated hue. If you don't see any devices listed here, there's a problem with your emulated hue configuration. And if you do see them listed here, there's a problem with Alexa. So this should help you narrow things down a bit. Next is a quick warning about Alexa cache. If you ever remove devices from your configuration file, they will continue to be discovered because Alexa has an internal cache or memory of past devices. Resetting this can be a bit tricky. It can sometimes resolve itself after a few days or weeks. Otherwise, you will need to unplug your Amazon speaker overnight, uninstall and reinstall the app, and eventually it should force a cache reset. This has nothing to do with Home Assistant or Emulated Hue. It seems to be a weird feature of Alexa, so don't pull your hair out like I did. One more thing, I will link to the official Emulated Hue documentation below. It covers various edge cases and some additional configurations, so I encourage you to scan through that if you have the time. So there you have it, a free way to integrate Home Assistant with Alexa. And as always, if you have any questions about this process, I will be in the comments below to help wherever I can. Otherwise, keep an eye out for my Node Red video, which is slightly more complicated to set up, but has a number of benefits over Emulated Hue. Do subscribe to the channel. These videos take a lot of work to make and watching the numbers go up really motivates me to keep going. Either way, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.